Aim the scanning for target, rolling up, and it'll fire just after it gets up on top. It's probably the baddest thing in the battlefield. This vehicle is nothing but a 70-ton jersey barrier without a crew. The soldiers are what makes that weapon system lethal. The 3rd ID picked their top two tank crews and set them off to train for six weeks. Traverse right with the camera. We met them in the final week of their preparation. You get to play on the big boy platform. Yes, this is the Super Bowl of tanks. The Sullivan Cup is a, is a best tank crew competition. This was the competition before the competition. They were all going to get something out of this experience, but only one crew would get to represent the third ID. We flew to Jacksonville, we picked up our rental car, and we took off for Georgia. We'd be meeting two tank crews at Fort Stewart. While we were driving, we passed the time researching tank facts. The, the, according to this, there's a maintenance challenge or a maintenance heat, so they have to do, um, they replaced an eight block section of tank track. Tank history, tank movies. Now in Fury, they had, uh, they had their war name, remember? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. We're gonna have fun with it. Yeah. You know? We were all pretty stoked for this story. Now there are telltale signs that you're in Georgia. There's tons of Spanish moss. There's historic cemeteries. There's that good old feeling of Southern charm. There's the alligators. But it was the tank crossing signs that let us know we were in the right place. I've always had an affection for tanks but it started when I was a young NCO in Korea. This was actually three quarter inch we were shooting on. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the camera with the umbilical cord, look at that. Young Army Sergeant Lance Milstead driving an M60 tank. That's right, I'm a tanker. Does that qualify me as a tanker? If not, I thought at least it would give me some street cred with the tankers we were about to meet. Time to meet some tankers. Both crews were from Charlie Company 164 Armor. Team Cannonarchy was made up of Smith, Chappies, Bates, and McLean. And Team Count Tracula was made up of Fauntleroy, Felton, Corona, and Martin. Sergeant First Class Todd Poison was responsible for training them and deciding who gets to go to the cup. What's your role with uh, the team from Third ID this year? As the Division Abrams Master Gunner, uh, I was given the rare and unique opportunity to create a six-week train-up. Everything tank-related. We spent a lot of time in the motor pool and doing ammunition upload and vehicle ID and land navigation. I created a mount mounted land nav course for them. They did about 250 kilometers in one day. Did a couple of refuels on the move. For those who don't know what the Sullivan Cup is, I know it's, this is the third time they've done yep. it, but, but you know, could you give us a description of, of what the competition entails and what it's about? Uh, the Sullivan Cup is a, is a best tank crew competition. It's a, it's a crew level event. So tank crews are four people, driver, loader, gunner, and tank commander. Um, and it's open to, to uh, our allies. But every active division sends their best tank crew that has tanks. And uh, the National Guard and Marine Corps get to send their guys. And it's, it's to see who the best of the best is. The first thing that really struck me, I was like, Man, these are, they're like kids. <laughs> they're so young. But we quickly got past the fact that they're so young because they're so passionate and they're so professional and competent. And they really are engaged in what they're doing and being excellent at it. I'm getting the chance to represent an entire division. Yeah, you're one of two teams you consider the best. Hey, eight people, and I'm one of them. I'm really grateful for the opportunity. Uh, it's really humbling. 
today's tanks are so high tech that it's actually hard to miss. So, as part of the train up, the crews have to face degraded modes of operation. Hey, traverse right with the camera. And it's really hard. Sergeant First Class Roy Smith and his crew were about to find out just how hard it is. That's where a lot of gunners have difficulty, when you have stabilization failure, when you can only use your gas, your gunner's auxiliary sight, instead of the primary sight. Whoa, whoa. Whether your LRF is damaged and you have to battle sight ranges, manually input ranges, and you have to figure out what those ranges are. And you can see that round impact that way. These are all skills that, back in World War II, that was the norm. I created an entire table six of nothing but degraded engagements, and I took almost everything away from them. So I need you to move to the bullpen, where you will receive an AAR. Sorry. And the, you guys are a crew. All right, you guys are four parts of that killing machine. It was tough, wasn't it? So with a full-up firing system, Sergeant Smith's crew would have aced that run. But with degraded mode, it's another story. But one, as you guys know, we don't get to train degraded mode nearly enough, at least in my opinion. And two, this is also to get you guys ready for when you go out to bedding, that whatever they throw at you out there won't be anywhere near as difficult as what we had here. That was a very good technique. Yeah. And I could see your rounds, you did that whip. That's important. Perfect. Just saturate the target. Put, put lead on that target. They only qualified two out of six engagements. What does it take to get you guys ready? We need to be physically fit. A regular PT test has nothing on this tanker PT test. I score 300s, and I do not max out this tanker PT test. Part of the Sullivan Cup is to have these physical tests uh, of strength and agility that relate to the tank. Place it neatly on the thing. I'll just throw it. Get set. Go. The test is based on the 1974 Armor Crewman Proficiency Test. Talk about a smoke session. It took actual things that you do as a tanker and you have a time limit to, to achieve you know, each of these five tasks in and it's very challenging. It's, it's physically grueling. You can score 300 on an Army PT test and not necessarily be a good loader because you don't challenge muscle groups that you would normally use as a loader doing the APFT. I hope it's here to stay. I really do, because I think it is an amazing, amazing test, physical test. <laughs> Poison lined up the full arsenal of tools to prepare the team, even some high-tech video games. It's actually called the yeah, Close Combat Tactical facility. Trainer. Some of the good things about it is, unlike another simulator that we use, this one, you, the whole crew can get in. Uh, you have driver, actually you see the driver in there right now. Uh, can I take a look in there? I mean, excuse me. This is exactly how it's going to look when you're inside the As much as I really wanted to drive a tank, this was as close as I'd get. So this you'd actually look in with your eyeball? Right. Oh, okay. Still pretty cool. So where is the trigger? So that would be this one right here. Oh, the top one? Yep. Got it. Okay. And uh, to you right here, this, this is... This is quite the video game. <laughs> My time as a tank gunner was up. Prepare to defend. Team had their own mission. Carry heat, report Redcom 1. Heat battle carried and Redcom 1. Up! Ultimately, these crews and everything we do is in the name of lethality. Fire adjust. Uh, it's how fast can we put steel on target. This was the crew's final bit of practice before their last day on the range. Let's make the mission. Over. Yeah, you know, I remember Sergeant Smith talking, and he said this vehicle is nothing but a 70-ton jersey barrier without a crew. Tank is a tank. Mm. You put the crew in there, and then you have a weapon system, and the, the, the soldiers are what makes that weapon system lethal. All right, now, without slipping the scales on a uh, gas bore sight knob. But it goes back to seat and excellence. I mean, I, these guys are going to take all this training away, and they're going to take what they have picked up here, uh, you know, through the training and uh, mentorship and they're going to take that and they're going to, they're going to give it back. We'll be down range here in a second. Team Contracula is on deck for their last degraded run. It's her last chance to impress.
And it's kind of a it's, a, it's a lost art. It's definitely a lost art. You need to practice a lot. And a lot of tank crews don't get the opportunity to practice it, to really get proficient at it like they should be. So, you know, something, uh, Justin, I sense a lot of passion when you talk about this. Just giving the opportunity to even get a shot to prove it is such a big deal to me. And tank is scanning for a target, it's rolling up, and it'll fire just after it gets up on top. <laughs> you may get picked to go, you may not. Um, you may go, you may win, you may not. You're still going to take something away from this experience, I, I, yeah. I bet. Just getting ready, preparing for the shot. To get a shot to go to the Southern Cup, I have learned probably more in these last few weeks than any other training exercise I've done combined. So we'd only been down here for three days, but they'd been doing this for six weeks, and they still didn't know who was going to go to the Cup. But I'll tell you, they gave it their best shot. It's a win-win-win situation. I'm either going to go back to the force with a whole lot of knowledge, I'm going to go to the Sullivan Cup with a lot of knowledge and opportunity to perform at the Sullivan Cup, or I'm going to the Sullivan Cup with a lot of knowledge and I'll win the Sullivan Cup. This is one of the best opportunities I've had as an Army crewman uh, in my career. And that's what the Sullivan Cup is about. We spent a week with two tank crews from Charlie 164 Armor. I think they've done an amazing job. I am proud of those guys. Very proud. Just getting ready, preparing for the shot. To get a shot to go to the Southern Cup, I have learned probably more in these last few weeks than any other training exercise I've done combined. We met Team Cannonarchy and Team Count Dracula, and they went head to head for six weeks. I'm getting the chance to represent an entire division. I'm really grateful for the opportunity. It's, uh, it's really humbling. Competition brings out excellence. That's driving us. We're driving them, and uh, it's, it's all in the spirit of competition to, to make a better team. These guys want to be the best. I'm ready. I'm, I've been waiting for this moment. But in the end, only one team gets to go to the Sullivan Cup. They've wrapped their head around this. We're getting an opportunity here to show that we are the best in the world. You get to play on the big boy platform. This is the Super Bowl of tanks. They want this. This isn't your mama's table six uh, qualification. And this is, a, this is a test to get after the best tank crew in the United States Army. We're going to push everybody to the limits. We're going to make it physically demanding. We're going to test your, your cognitive skills when you get out on the sticks exercises to make sure you know how to do the basic functions it takes to be a tanker. And then we're going to make sure you can come out of here and hit what you shoot at. All the way. Sergeant Fauntleroy's crew was picked to represent the third ID. The way the Sullivan Cup works is you show up, they issue you a tank, and you use it to compete in a series of events for points. 
So the only points you care about are to get into the top four. After that, it, nobody cares about your points because the shoot-off is the only thing that matters. The shoot-off determines who is the Sullivan Cup winner. So take us through the competition uh, briefly, the, the different stations, what they do, and, and how to get to that last phase. Well, first they have competition, which they call day zero. With Sunday, that was the armor crewman proficiency test. It starts off with an ammunition lift. It, that, to get 100 points, you need to do it 45 times, and I, I only can do it 36. Come on, Mark! Come on! Come on! Come on! One more! Ah. Track block shuffle. It's 20 meters. You take 10 track blocks, you move them back and forth. Then you have a cable drag for 15 meters. You, pick, you drag the cable, pick it up, and you just run back. Then you have a road wheel roll for 240 meters, basically a baseball diamond. And you, have, you finish off with a one-mile run and they posted the second best crew score, so we finished in second place. The mounted sticks lane comprised of a land navigation course, and there were five stations within the land navigation course. Your time begins now. The first station was their start point, and that was prepare for combat. They prepped their vehicle, got ready, and then they moved out, and an OC followed them. And then things got interesting. And it's interesting. Their tank broke down. Basically, we started our movement. Um, once we got up here to this intersection, uh, we was doing a little tactical pause just to make sure our bearings were good. And a lot of times, sometimes with certain problems that the tank may run into, it'll self-abort itself, pretty much like a, I guess, self-preservation, if you will. Essentially, it was the tank's check engine light coming on. Yeah, this is where the fault showed up again. It's not showing up. There it goes. It's back. So they did some troubleshooting. I think we good. And eventually, they had to pull over and just wait for another tank. These aren't their tanks. They literally jumped on this tank a couple of hours ago. So tanks break down. It is what it is. Hey, grab the 50. They eventually had to transfer all their gear, and they got back to work. They dealt with the, uh, the little uh, three-hour hiccup, and then they moved on. They got to their next station, um, which was maintenance. They had to break and replace a two-block section of track. They got beat on time on that one. They still got 60 points, because they were doing pretty well. They found all the rest of their land nav points, and it, it got really late. It was about 20, 100, 20, 30. By the time they got to that, the medical sticks lane. Just run over there. Black six, black six, white three. He's not breathing, and he's showing no signs of life. And they executed, got 88 points on that, did really well. Station five president. We went, uh, we went up to station five, which is again at the cantonment area, and they did vehicle ID, and that was, that was pretty rough. But they kicked the fourth station right in the seat. It was uh, Occupy a BP, did really well, and they got 100 points on their land nav as well, so. At the end of the day, they had 811 out of 1,000 points, and going into the gunnery, they were in 10th place out of 16 crews. The digital multi-purpose range complex at Fort Benning is impressive, and it'll test any tanker. This is not like any other range that I've ever been on. It is not a bowling alley, it is not flat terrain. And so it's forcing these crews, and it forces our future leaders to completely expand everything that they know about tank gunnery. Gunnery is one of the crew's strengths. And this is where all that degraded training at Fort Stewart hopefully would pay off. Family members perform if at any point during the day. Uh, Gunner for Gunnery, gunnery. Ready. Right now, they'll do the PC tank RPG team, degraded mode, and then they'll do their call for fire. Who you'll have coming up right now, as you see approaching the BP, is 164 Armor. So if we have any 164 Armor fans right here, here you, here you go. Your chance to cheer for them. Identify tank, tank. Oh, drive move up. Fire, fire, he can adjust. On the way. On, driver back, he's in deck. I overheard you um, talking about 164. What, what is it you said about that? 
they had they were having mechanical issues. They took them back to the room. Nothing they could fix out there. No. So our crew's out there. Um, they got one round off, and now they've had a malfunction. What we don't know is is uh, is if they're going to be given an alibi, which means if it was a, a fault that was uh, something they couldn't prevent, they'll give them an alibi, and this won't count against them. If it's something that they they caused, it it, it counts against them. So not a great start to the gunnery but it's it's what happens it's it's part of being a tanker and i think that you know what they learn through all the training is that they've got to be able to adapt to this so we're waiting to find out what's going to happen well, if I came out, I swear this was yet another setback but our guys put their time to good use to make sure they were ready if they get another shot yeah that mound is gone try it again so we got good news today our team found out they got an alibi and that means that when the round got stuck in the breach determined that it wasn't the crew's fault so that means they got to start fresh and they went out and they shot really well took second place on all the teams and that's kind of like breathing new life into them so we're here now at 10 o'clock and our crew's actually out on the range doing a night fire we also heard you guys took second in the day run second today? highest score in the yeah. day run yeah mm -hmm. you did a good run on the night night uh it could have been better if i had just trusted in my TC more. I couldn't identify a truck and troop target, but he could, so. It is what it is, I mean. I think Corona's beating himself up a little bit. He, um, they had a, their last engagement was, uh, they had, they, they fire off some flares to simulate that they're being fired on. And, and he, he didn't see them. They're in it to win it, and they're, they're working through the, the challenges you know and tomorrow's the last day to give it their all and see where the cards lay after that think think about the crew that wins this thing when they, when they go home and they turn around and say you know what we won this and this is how we did it no way no 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 they're, they're in third place man yeah they, they came up from third to from 10th to 3rd, they, they, they got 2nd best last night, wow. Back on the map, back on the map. Heard the good news man. Yes we're here. Yeah. So today you just got to go do what you do. Yeah. Three, got 3 engagements, 3 engagements to solidify our position in the top 4. And, uh, Game on. I know you're excited, but but you know, having followed you guys, we are we're just we're stuck. You know, going into the final gunnery, they were confident, they were focused. You know, barring any major malfunction, they should make the top four. Uh, looking at that, I don't have any affirmative things to say that why you miss those targets. If you're good at reading facial expressions, their faces speak volumes. Four seconds when you moved up to engage, getting a doubtful left. Over at, on target two at 14, they back down at 16. Phrases like doubtful left and over or short are not what a tanker wants to hear in an AAR. They got an over on target three. It means they missed. Points on the first engagement, zero and zero on the next two engagements. They've given you a total for the day, 50 points. And that's out of a possible 300. Right. I'm going to put you guys on a little break. Sergeant First Class Matt Nygren delivered the news with as much encouragement as he could. The wait now was to see if they'd go home. Sooner best. No news is good news right now. We're waiting on two more crews to finish their AARs and the final scores to come in to notify you on the points. That's how tight this competition's getting. What's the field looking like? I can't say it. I'm just going to tell you, no news right now is good news because that means we're not sending you we're not sending you out the door right now. All right. Um, we are back at the uh, hotel and we are waiting for news. Uh, today was a crazy day. It was a roller coaster ride. Uh, when we arrived this morning, uh, our guys that we knew were in 10th place. Uh, and it's actually on the way out that we were checking the, the Facebook site and found out that uh, because of their night gunnery, they had moved to third place. Um, so the last phase was today, and that was their last day gunnery, and um, they did not do well. So, you know, we're just, we're, wait, we're waiting to hear um, 
you know, whether they make the top four, because the top four is where they need to be to be able to compete in the gunnery tomorrow. And uh, and if we don't hear tonight, then you know we'll just find out on. Wait a minute. Oh, they said they might text us tonight, so give me a sec. This, this could be it. I think everybody who is still in the Army has an obligation to make sure that we continue to be adaptive uh, and innovative and, and continue to, to strive for excellence. So if we can instill that in our junior ranks and the soldiers that are coming through this competition, think about that 16 crews that now can go home to 16 different places and talk about what it takes to be the best here. So there was a tie for fourth place, which means five crews went to the shoot-off. And our guys, they missed it by one shot. I have a better picture of exactly what we need to do to truly become uh, more proficient armor crewmen. We're, bad, we're a bad tanker. I learned, I learned that we're better than we thought we were. Really, this competition is about seeding excellence or planting the seeds of excellence in the tank community. A great honor to come down here and compete for the best. And I mean, I'll be back in two years. I'm, I'm going to win in two years. That's, that's what I'm taking out of his motivation to come back. It's a great experience. I mean, in my eyes, it's a once in a lifetime thing. I mean, it's not every day that you're going to go somewhere and have a best tank competition and your name just so happen to come pop up. Any team that goes is exposed to the training and all these other great tank crews and the competition that make them better tankers as a whole. Yeah, you have a winner, but everybody that comes is better for it. It helped our resilience a lot overall. It helped my resilience a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm a resilient, pretty resilient person before this, but this made it. This made me even stronger with this competition. I, I was honored to be in a position to give the best of the best a run for the money. I was honored to be in a position where the best of the best were like, oh man, we got to watch out for those guys from Third ID. When you tell stories like this, you always hope your team's going to win, and our guys didn't. But I wouldn't have it any other way because what we saw is the level of resiliency, and that these guys, no matter what, they kept running hard after their goal. I mean, that's what it's about about not quitting, it's about perseverance, and they showed us the best of that.